Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. In today's video I'm going to give you a tour of my little studio. It's very small, I'd say maybe 10 by 12. It's very small and I've made some you know innovative designs, worked with a lot of things that I already had. Some of the things I've got in here literally came out of a building that burned down. <laughs> so I've got bits and pieces of things people gave to me and so it's going to be fun today. I'm also today I want to announce that I'm going to try something uh, new on the channel. I'm going to try to do to upload like maybe five times a week and some of it's just going to be studio vlog like uh, you know just ask you know just kind of a chat uh, see how everybody is and say what I made that day what I'm thinking of and things like that just kind of a daily vlog and then on Friday I'm going to try to do a tutorial every or a tip every Friday and then take either uh, probably Saturday off and then on Sunday I'll do a little you know wisdom from the Bible thing for anybody that's interested and then either five or six days a week I'm going to try to post every single day so it's going to be a big challenge they're not going to be the ones you know where I'm just catching up say hey this is what I made today and this is what I'm thinking about and you know how are you doing and things like that I think that I would just like to try it and see if it does good or not and the other thing is is that I think it's going to make me sit down and sew because I am just lately really struggling getting in my sewing room and getting in the mood to sew so I'm thinking if I can say hey I made this today I worked on that this is in my shop I mean the 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 um, title of my YouTube channel is the title of my Etsy store so I'm thinking that maybe making it more about or, or somewhat also about what I'm selling and what I'm making and kind of just see how it goes so okay so let me give you a cute a quick little tour. I'm sorry if the camera shakes a lot. I've only got my phone. I, I use my phone for all my recording. So I'm going to have to carry my phone around and I'm, I don't know how the footage is going to, I have trouble with it, uh, with the lighting sometimes on it. So I don't know how it's going to go. So let me see what I can do. I'm going to read. Okay. So when I come in the studio, that's a little sign of my door. It may be a song, but I found it on Timo. I just just to remind myself that everything's going to be okay. And when I'm recording, I hang my little sign on the door. <laughs> this is my hall, so I'm coming in. And this is a small little bedroom, literally. Let me get back here. It's going to be really tricky. Let's see if I can zoom out. Okay, I'm going to have to zoom out. So from here, that's the door where you come in. And then it... Uh, the room has an indent where I right there which of about maybe almost three feet and then the shelving and then you come around to a window and then it's got a closet and I used to have um, a bed between those two closets and this used to be the master bedroom that I built on an addition for that yeah master bedroom and literally it's like 12 by 10 this is I live in a very small house and then when you stand back on my back against the wall it looks like that I hope it's not too dark I have trouble with lighting let me see if I can kick this one and set it down low okay so the first thing when you come in I got my mannequins here to the left it's this little closet and I packed it full of the fabrics I don't really use that much up there and then this like men's shirts that I get and then down here is just a mesh, mesh mess right now. Um, that's like collars, ties, things like that. And then up, oopsies, there's my finger. Up there, um, which was, you know, of course, a bookcase, is where I store lace, rickrack. Um, and this is more lace in the blue one. And then I've got in that cardboard thing is actually a quilt thing I've been working on, which may never ever get finished, I don't know. And that's an earring rack that I'm going to give to my daughter. There's a backup sewing machine. And then I'm going to go back and I'll show you how I made my table. Okay, so this is where a bed set was between these two windows. So what I did, let me go underneath here. I like to make do with what I have when I can. I had some two by sixes and boards, and so um, I put them all together. 
and I built them into the wall here like that and painted them white and then I put this rug <laughs> get up off the floor I put this rug on it so that my machines don't move and it's quite sturdy because surgers shake a lot and that really helps with that I have another wall here where I may put another sewing thread rack. I don't know yet. And then I've got, this is a movable light, which I use in different places. And I've got another light for here. I'll we'll see if that'll help. It might be too bright. But there's my sewing rack. Let me turn this off. Well, I guess it did kind of help out, didn't it? Um, different threads. And then, of course, if you go back... But, and I'll talk about my sewing desk last because it's quite innovative. So here I have uh, more storage up there and more shirts and things to, to uh, pick from. And this huge basket that I need to go through of denim scraps right there. And back in there are just more scraps of like squares and stuff when I... You know, things like that. I think that one has yarn in it, the pink one. And there's another project I'm working on sitting down there. Oh, I almost pulled my laptop off. That would be bad. This is my shipping scale right there. And I can't decide where to put that yet, so it's just living there right now. There's my little microphone case. And that's how I weigh and what, all my packaging stuff. Um, if you're in the States and you buy from me, you get a... I, I use these little handmade envelopes. I write a little message on them. And I put a cup of, I give you a cup of tea, uh, depending on what it's going to be. This is the one I'm using right now. Each order gets that. So then these are just stacked on and in fabrics. But here's the thing. I didn't want to spend a lot. You know, I always live very quite frugally. So I, and I was trying to think what I had. And so I had some doors. So these are, my brother passed away, one of my brothers, and he left me with some building supplies. And I didn't know what to do with them. And there was a bunch of closet doors in there. So literally these are the hard sided closet doors, the folding type, cut in half and set on a little one by back here along my wall. And this is a strip of exterior siding board I had that I notched for my curtain and I put it all the way down and then I built these shelves with all the way up. These are all the solid type of of the closet doors. And then he had a bunch of Venetian types, you know, the type that's got the this in it. So I kind of did the same thing. I put a support along the wall and then I put the doors on top of them to create my back shelving. I'm like, hey, I finally got to use them. That was amazing. So, and then over here, they weren't quite long enough to get to the wall. So I stopped and I used little pieces of plywood to, to finish it off. And then I just painted everything white. That's the thing about having an old house. You feel free just to do whatever you want. And this was a store from, um, oh, uh, somebody gave to me that from a store. It was a pegboard thing. It's so like, hey, that fits there. It fit perfectly. Like, literally, it fit perfect. Here's my... My wall like I couldn't have, and, and there where it ended you, you couldn't have got any any more perfect for that which I was really surprised so now let me show you my my sewing desk this is a project we're going to be doing let me set it off to the side here this is was another thing that was in the that he'd given me and it's a door and what I did is I had this original sewing disc which was also given to me since so they didn't want it and I mean it's got blemishes whatever I pulled out the old machine that was in it and I've got different boards I can pull out or move for different machines that I use and so what I did was I took this here which came out of a fire <laughs> as I said it's my, my whole sewing room is upcycled literally the most of it is like I bought the rug new uh, I didn't have one to work in here but see, it's got the stains all over the front. But this metal drawer is my trash So for sewing thread. And a lot of times when you see me sewing on the videos, I throw the string on the floor. It's because my camera's right here. I can't open my trash door. But this works really well. I leave it out. I, I leave this out all the time. And this fit perfectly under here. 
So what, what's nice is I throw my trash in here. This is all my shipping supplies. In here are my bags. And I do stamps on them. Uh, cute little, you know, ink stamping on them to kind of make it like you're getting... And you are getting ephemera, so... And then up here is just scraps that I use for patch patches and patchwork right at the machine. So I don't have to go up and look for something. And otherwise, it's just a regular little sewing desk. I stuck... If you watch my Timu, Timu haul, I stuck my sticker thing on here and it's staying pretty good i keep trying to pick it up though because i'm not i'm like i just walked by i was like no it's stuck <laughs> i'm so silly so anyways and this is just regular you know with the three drawers i just keep my stuff in there and then i set this plastic one i'm gonna see if i can get back at the end here and this is nice because i keep my buttons down here and and here Oh, this is the lace and stuff I got from Donna. Um, but here's like my buttons. These are vintage. So if I can show you, I've got vintage buttons here and here and here. And then down here, I've got more buttons. I go through a lot of buttons and I, I love collecting them. And then this is my recording equipment, lighting, and things like that. Extra stuff. Which this dresser is really not good. Like like them but it's what I have okay so we just make do right so okay so when you come down here the back side of my desk to give me a big work area I got this mat off of Amazon you can get them they sell them in different sizes it's an ironing mat and a cutting mat and as long as you iron on it it'll somehow it it heals the actual uh, from the cutting and it seems to be working fine. And then under here, what this is, is this is a door, okay? So I wanted to, I'm gonna move this here. I wanted it to be strong enough, so I created me some legs out of PVC pipe, but I didn't want it to be permanent because sometimes I might have to use this room for a guest room. So I wanted to be able to drop, so I put it on hinges under here, and I can drop this, pull these out, both of the legs up and I can drop it clear down to the back and fold my sewing uh, desk up or pick my sewing desk up then and set it over and be able to put a bed from that wall out. I haven't had any of my kids ask or need to stay overnight or something but I wanted to be able to have that option. So anyways this is more uh, on projects I got going on and I vacuumed reason my sewing foot's way over here but yeah, uh, sometimes I get this kind of stuffed under here, but I keep the trash can under here. So when I'm cutting, I can throw my cuttings under there. And But that's pretty much it. I just want to show you my desk. Because it, you really need a big surface when you're, you know, to shove your garments when you shove them through. It's so much nicer. I mean, you don't have to have it. But if you're sewing all the time, I definitely recommend getting... A bigger surface area and it's pretty sturdy it's I mean I can't sit on it it's a hollow door but it's sturdy enough for everything I need to do so I hope you enjoyed the studio tour I hope everything came out okay on camera it's not all blippy with the lighting but yeah that's and oh uh, one more thing I might point out is this is where up in the gray totes that's where I keep all my upcycles and that way I fold them, I put them away, and I'm in there all the time to make sure nothing, you know, nothing's getting too musty or whatever. And I usually sell enough to keep the, the, uh, my, my stock pretty fresh anyways. Whatever doesn't sell, I just convert to something I like and I wear it. So, or sometimes I upcycle my upcycles and come up with a better idea and then they'll sell. So yeah, I hope you enjoy the tour. I've got... I usually keep like my jeans all stacked and then down here these are little shoe boxes and in these I keep my smaller pieces like this will be all reds I keep them color coordinated and they shove in under there perfectly some of them I got the lids off of I was either in them or they just getting too much and I need to get another shoe box but it works really well and this it slid under here okay it works okay for my pockets 
I just, and if they, you know, every now and then if I don't use them up enough, enough, I like to rewash them, keep them fresh. So that's it. And then uh, depending on what I'm doing, like now I'm putting my flannels in a stack here. And I like to put my knits in a stack so the shoulders don't stretch out. I've got different resources that I can go to. I'm going to not do sheets as much because I don't really use them. I'll be making some spring. These are vintage sheets. I'm going to do some spring dresses and show you how I do that with those. But see, I've got more up there. And I just don't use them as much. Really what I use the most right now are the men's shirts. I will order in like a women's tops and they're so thin. They're so thin they're hard to use. And this is when I was doing a lot of, uh, I'd buy Joann's flannels just to add a color to the flannel tops. Um, just to add a piece of color because I don't see the point of upcycling if it doesn't sell. Like if you if you can even add a little bit of of a cut fabric, you know, of a fabric you buy retail to make these sell, I'm still helping, you know, the environment more. I'm still uh, recycling better. You know what I'm saying? It's better to have... 10% or 20% be new in a garment and be able to sell that 80%. You know what I'm saying? So I hope you understand. But anyways, let me know what you think about my little studio. I'm always adding and doing new things to it. Like I'm always learning like this here. I would like to do, to put on a uh, lazy, you know what they call a lazy Susan so I can spin it easier. It came out of a store. It was a store display like nuts or something <laughs> most of this in here is upcycled like i made this out of barn wood on my barn this here um, thank you for joining me today on my studio tour <laughs> and i hope you got some inspiration from it and and can take away some of the ideas for yourself that you might be able to do and um, thank you for joining me here today and for watching. And please uh, like, share, and subscribe. It helps me out a lot. I appreciate it so much. You're such a blessing. And until next time, happy sewing.